Hi everyone! Today we're going to talk about one of the funniest TV shows of all times, The Office. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to, for old time's sake. Ryan started the fire! Oh my no! God! You jump to the right and you shake a hand. One of the things that makes the show so special is its unique sense of humor. The Office has a particular type of humor that not everyone gets, but once you do, it's hard not to love it. What are you doing? I don't know. I, well, my mouth tastes so bad all of a sudden. Hey, you're watching Iwa. I am Miss Carolina. To master a language, you need to work on all your skills, listening, reading, speaking. A lot of people struggle to find a system that will help them improve all of the skills and actually see the result. That's why in the IWA app, we make tasks and games for you to cover all the aspects of learning. You can read and listen to books, learn grammar and vocabulary, all in one place. Iwa also shows you your results and tells you what you should work on. Join Iwa via the link in the description and get a 50% discount for the premium subscription. The humor in the office is often referred to as cringe comedy or awkward humor. This type of humor relies on uncomfortable situations and misunderstandings to create comedic tension. The show also utilizes mockumentary style filming in which the characters speak directly to the camera as if they were being interviewed for a documentary. And uh, you have made my life so much easier in that I am going to have to let you go first. What? Why? Why? Well, theft and stealing. Stealing? Now, let's talk about Michael Scott. As one of the most beloved characters on the show, he is the kind of boss that you love to hate. He is always trying too hard to be liked by his employees and he has a unique way of saying and doing things that often get him in trouble. Can I just clean out your desk? I'm sorry. Here are five adjectives that help describe Michael Scott from The Office. Number one, insecure, not confident or assured, uncertain and anxious. And I knew exactly what to do, but in a much more real sense, I had no idea what to do. Number two, egotistical, excessively self-centered, Conceited. Am I a hero? I really can't say, but yes. Number three, clumsy, lacking grace or skill, awkward, prone to making mistakes or dropping things. I feel blessed. I feel very blessed. Number four, gullible, easily deceived or fooled, quick to believe something without sufficient evidence or proof. The more money we're all gonna make, it's not a pyramid scheme. Number five, bias. A tendency or inclination towards a particular perspective or opinion, often resulting in unfairness or prejudice towards others who hold different views or belong to a different group. <sighs> Michael, Michael, Michael. Oh, welcome to my convenience store. Would you like some googie googie? Oh, I have some very delicious googie googie, only 99 cents plus tax. Try my googie googie. Try my googie googie. Try my googie googie. Try my. Now, let's look at some of Michael's lines to learn some English expressions and vocabulary. Number one. Sometimes I'll start a sentence and I don't even know where it's going. I just hope I find it along the way. To find something along the way. It means to discover or figure something out as you go. I just hope I find it along the way. Number two. I love inside jokes. 
I'd love to be a part of one someday. I'd love to be a part of one someday. An inside joke, it's a joke that it's only funny to a specific group of people who have shared an experience or knowledge. Not everyone will get it because you had to be there to understand the joke. Which I was. I love inside jokes. I'd love to be a part of one someday. Number three. They're trying to make me an scapegoat. They're trying to make me an scapegoat. The idiom he's trying to use is scapegoat, not scapegoat. To make someone a scapegoat means to blame someone for something that is not their fault. But Michael messes it up and says scapegoat instead. They're trying to make me an scapegoat. Notice how we would use the indefinite article a for a scapegoat, but the indefinite article an for an scapegoat, depending on if the word starts with a consonant sound or a vowel sound. This is a great example of how Michael tries to sound smart, but often he fails. Oh God, my mind is going a mile an hour. Number four, tell him to call me ASAP as possible. Well, just tell him to call me ASAP as possible. Thanks. This one is not an idiom, it's an acronym. Michael is trying to use the acronym ASAP, ASAP as soon as possible. But by adding as possible, he's actually saying, tell him to call me as soon as possible as possible, which doesn't make sense. Just another example of how even when Michael is trying to be efficient, he still manages to mess things up. Well, just tell him to call me ASAP as possible. Thanks. Number five. Fool me once, strike one, but fool me twice, Strike three. This statement combines two different expressions. The first expression is, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. This saying implies that if someone tricks you or deceives you once, it's their fault or responsibility. However, if they trick or deceive you a second time, it's on you because you should have learned from your previous experience and not trusted them again. Fool me once, strike one. But fool me twice, strike three. The second expression is a reference to baseball, where a batter is given three strikes before they are out. The correct expression is three strikes and you're out. This saying implies that if someone makes three mistakes or failures, they will be punished or removed from the situation. Michael Scott's statement combines these two expressions but messes them up by saying strike one instead of shame on you and strike three instead of you're out. <laughs> This shows his tendency to mix up idioms and sayings leading to humorous situations in the show. Fool me once, strike one. But fool me twice, strike three. To finish, I would like to leave you with one more quote from Michael that really sums up his philosophy of life and his goofball personality. Goofball an informal term used to describe a person who is silly, eccentric, or amusingly foolish, often used in a playful way. I hope you've enjoyed learning from one of the most iconic characters in TV history. I am Miss Carolina, and you can check out my YouTube channel English With Us and my comic videos on Instagram and TikTok. All info in the description. Cheers!